my octant. It's a navigation device. It's used to measure the elevation between the horizon and either the sun or stars. It was developed around 1730 and was used until the late 18th century, even 19th century, even after the invention of the uh, sextant. It's basically got the same mirror system as the sextant and it's aligned uh, very similar to the sextant. Uh, my particular one uh, probably has an accuracy of about six minutes of arc, whereas the better ones, which had better engravers, <laughs> had accuracies of about one minute of arc, which allows you to determine the latitude. Mine probably a latitude uh, plus or minus uh, six nautical miles. Uh, I made all the parts on it except for some bolts and some knurled knobs. I could have made the neural knobs, but it was easier to buy some from uh, Amazon. Before I could do much uh, construction, I needed to make up some plans. Couldn't find any on the internet. Sketched a few things out with pencil and paper, and then I went to my Adobe Illustrator and Photoshop and uh, made up some the plans you see here. Now, some of them are templates so that I can make things in the right place. Some of them are little reminders of how I have to place the uh, things. Some of them are the little patterns that I transfer to the brass, uh, and some of them are just things that keep me from getting confused in the arrangements and etc. Uh, first you need to make one of these. It's made out of half-inch pine. Uh, you do some cutting, uh, doweling, gluing, sanding. You cut some holes in here as you go along. You notice I have some markings on it. You have to make sure that this angle is correct and so you can put your plates and things back down on it. Okay, this is my uh, sextant, octant. <laughs> and I have all the parts. I need to do a little finish work on my uh, frame. And uh, this is my index arm. The site is over here. The mirror is here. The index mirror is there. I have a solar filter which I can swing into place. And I'll show you all those. Uh, in a minute. There's the back, there's the front, there's the view. Uh, this is the uh, up-close version. Uh, the light comes down to the index mirror here and then it reflects at, depending upon the angle of the index arm. At the bottom of the index arm there's a protractor arm and a scale on a vernier. Uh, the light then gets reflected down to this little mirror here which is half mirror down below and you can see through up above and that then reflects the light through the sight here and uh, in we, if you need to I can loosen the, this neural knob on the back and swing this little filter into place and now the sunlight will come down there and it will not blind you that's a sun filter it's actually out of a uh, welding mask and that goes back up there. Uh, there's an adjustment here for the orientation of the uh, horizon mirror. This mirror has to be exactly parallel to that one when the vernier protractor reads zero degrees down here. So when that reads zero, these two mirrors have to be parallel. And that adjustment is made by using this little adjusting arm knob here. So I can rotate the horizon mirror and sight through here to get them both aligned. There's adjustments on the back of each of the mirrors to, for the tilt. There's an adjustment on the back of my index mirror for tilt also. This is the index mirror on the front side. This is the back of the index mirror with the tilt adjustment. This is the protractor at the bottom of the index arm. The vernier, that's the solar filter out of place, swung out of place. That's the half silver below and clear above, horizontal mirror, and that's the sight. A little hole you go view, view, view through. The first thing you need to do with your piece of brass before you can uh, put your markings on it is to rough up the surface a little bit with, uh, this is uh, 220 or 150 sandpaper and it puts a little frost onto it so it's easy to see your markings. Take a paper towel and a little bit of acetone. You can get this in your paint store and clean up the 
area where you're going to put your uh, stencil thing down. This is the pattern I'm going to put on there. This has been printed out on a laser printer. And it turns out that the laser printer ink that's on the paper actually comes off with acetone. So what I can do is take a little bit of tape, scotch tape, and then I locate that on my brass. And you can see through the back of the pattern to see where you're locating it. And then I take a little bit of acetone not too much. If you get too much, it smears this. Hold this down and then push the acetone into the paper. And in the process, you can see it turns dark. I usually try to hold it down until the acetone dries, which is actually quite quickly. And then when you lift it up, you transfer the pattern your brass and it'll actually stay on there it's it doesn't come off easily it will come off with acetone so if you make a mistake you can uh, start over the trickiest part is getting your scotch tape off your brass <laughs> this is my antique scroll saw it's a delta scroll saw about 1954 I've already put a pattern onto a piece of brass if you're going to, this is going to be actually a small piece and I'm going to cut around. Uh, if you need to do any other work, I needed to drill a few holes and I drilled and tapped a hole here. And you want to do that before you cut the pattern out because once you cut the pattern, it's a tiny piece and it's hard to do the drilling. So I have a fairly big piece here. Uh, what I do is I usually cut it on top of a piece of plywood. This is so cheap. I think it's Luan. And I can then, it, it, it keeps it from chattering a little bit. And the important thing is to get the uh, brass very tightly held down so it doesn't chatter. Uh, this is a, just a standard uh, blade. Uh, it's not too thick and not too thin. And I can't remember the count on it. You can go on the internet and find blades like this. It's a... Uh, it's actually a coping saw blade. It's uh, 16 teeth per inch. Uh, I don't know what else you need to do about it. But it cuts through the brass pretty well. If you get a bit smaller and thinner than that, I have, I have a tendency to break them too often. <laughs> uh, so anyway, let me give it a whirl here. When this goes on, you won't be able to hear me. <laughs> Usually, I don't try to cut right up to the line because I do a lot of file work after this. And uh, there's the piece. Uh, once, once you're done cutting, I clamp the brass piece uh, with some wood. If you clamp it up against your vise, it'll scar it up and then it'll look like. And I have just a standard, fairly fine grain file. And after a little it. There's uh, lines on my piece so I can tell where I'm to file to. And you can take it out to check it. I probably need to file, file down a little bit more. Uh, once you get done with that, you know, sandpaper. I, after a few minutes of uh, filing and sanding and whatever, this is what the piece looks like. That's the back side I'm going to screw it down to another piece. This is the front side. I polished it a little bit with sandpaper. I want to show how I run two pieces of brass together. Uh, these are just little scrap pieces. I've drilled a 3 16 hole in this piece, and a 3 16 hole in this piece, and then I have 3 16 brass rod, which just fits through the hole, just fits through the hole. And what I want to now do is I'm going to rivet them together, something like that. I put a the slightly larger drill bit in, and you can see right at the edge here that little shiny, shiny piece of uh, metal. 
that's what used to be a sharp edge has now been cut off of an angle uh, as described previously. I find for my particular brass sheets I actually want to cut it a little smaller than 3 sixteenths. Okay, I'm ready to piece these together. I now have the one with the rod in it. And I think I want this to be the back side. So I put the rod through the hole. Flip it over. Well, get it down on my uh, piece of metal here. And I grab my peening hammer. And I gently pound this over. So the rod doesn't fall out. Turn it over and keep the rod from falling out. And now I can count over this side a little bit. And what happens now is the reason I put that little cut the edge off, the brass from the rod can now flow slightly into the larger diameter cone ridge that I put on the top of the brass, and that then holds it from falling through. It's actually quite tight in there now. I, you can't move either piece. But, and then you just continue. Okay, I've uh, peened down pretty far on this side. It's a, it's a little domed right now, but the diameter of the portion of the rod is now much greater than the hole actually. And so now what I need to do is to grind off that little dome of the rod and then I can sand it flush with a brass sheet. Let me try a little file work on it here. As you can see, it's uh, it's pretty flat. I, I put a few extra little scars in here, which I shouldn't have done. But if you if you don't have that, you can actually make this quite smooth, and it's almost unnoticeable. Here are some of the pieces before uh, assembly. Uh, this is called the index arm, and uh, there's actually two pieces here. There's the uh, big long chunk and then there's a little round thing that's been riveted to the big long chunk and that makes a double uh, thickness there. And the reason for the double thickness is because little pieces like this are going to be screwed onto that. So I'll drill and tap some holes and put some tiny screws in there to hold that piece. Uh, that's all so that we get an assembly that looks something like this. And uh, I don't know if you can see that in focus. But anyway, this thing is going to hold a mirror. This is the little adjustment for the tilt of the mirror. And these again have been screwed onto a double thickness of my brass sheets. So this will be reproduced over here. Uh, this is the little piece that, uh, that is bent up to become something like this. This one has extra holes so you can see through it. This one does not. There will be a mirror sitting here. There will be a mirror sitting here. Okay, as you see, I've made a few mark. Uh, put my little marker down on this. This is the uh, index arm. And I need to cut some... Uh, little hash marks and some numbers down here. Uh, I've held it down to my uh, platform with a couple of pieces of cardboard which squeeze this in here and hold it so it doesn't move around. I need to be able to uh, hold down my brass piece for engraving purposes and I've wedged it in on a piece of plywood. I put an octagonal base on it. 
so I can now put it in my vise, clamp it down. And then when I need to, I can do this, hold it out, turn it, and reclamp it. Or you can buy a $600 or $800 vise, which allows you to move it around like that. But I can't afford that, so I built this little device. It's uh, pretty handy, and you do have to undo the vise and rechannel it, but that's okay. So, I'm not the best engraver in the world. I'm not tending to give lessons in engraving, but this is me engraving. One little slice. Thank you.